ready and we are live hello everybody and welcome to the fleming film show today we've got a very good episode and joining me as always is mr justin doyle hello justin whoop whoop hey hey what's up rob how you doing i'm good i'm good uh today we're going to be talking about our top five favorite courtroom films because i recently watched where the crawl dad sing which i didn't expect to be a courtroom film but it gave me an idea to do this episode yeah that's a that was a interesting movie for sure did you like it um it was it had its interesting moments but it was more of a slow burn compared to other films Mm -hmm. like yeah it's definitely not the number one film of the year no and it didn't make your courtroom list either i'm sure no no because there are much better courtroom films than this one yeah 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 it was okay kind of kind of felt like a lifetime movie a little bit but um i love i love the production of it all i love where the setting was i just thought that was really interesting and then the twist at the end is obviously the whole reason why the movie itself works because otherwise it's like eh, just following this girl around it's crazy that she took care of herself for so long you know definitely but um yeah, that one's that one's creeping out of theaters right now. Yeah, because I thought that the main woman and David Strainham were the two best performances in the film. Like all the others yeah. were a bit bland. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Uh, all right, so yeah, courtroom movies. This is uh, interesting. We've we've kind of been um, uh, teasing this one for a while because we were going to have one of your buddies join us, but uh, that didn't work out. So we're just going to do it ourselves. Exactly, exactly. Are you ready with mine number five? Yeah, you're going to kick it off? Yes. My number five is a movie by Mr. Jonathan Demme. This won the Academy Award for Best Actor and also for Best Original Song. Uh, This is the first big movie to discuss about homosexuality and the AIDS crisis. And this is Philadelphia starring Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington. I have not seen these one. Oh, you should watch it. It's a very good movie. Yes. So tell me about the movie. So Tom Hanks is playing the gay character. He's uh, dating Antonio Banderas. It's weird how two straight men are playing a gay couple, but this this was was the 90s, and these two actors have range, and they can pull it off. So, yeah. Yeah. So he contracts AIDS and gets fired from his job because he had AIDS, and the only person he goes who he thinks will represent him is his old partner, played by Denzel Washington. But Denzel Washington is a bit unsure because he's a little bit of a homophobe, but then has a change of heart and decides to represent him and help him settle this court case. Uh, Yeah. Jason Robards is also in this movie. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. I definitely know about this movie, and I know uh, Tom Hanks won uh, his first award for that one. So yeah, and it's it's primarily courtroom, huh? Yes, yes, definitely because he's a lawyer. Denzel Washington's a lawyer. Obviously, they obviously at the start of the film they have their court case together. Hmm uh yeah this is this is a big one 7.7 7 on rotten tomatoes i mean on imdb it's a that's pretty high with a huge uh budget uh the budget was 26 million worldwide gross though 206.6 million dollars that's insane especially for a drama movie uh never happened 79 percent of rotten tomatoes 89 percent audience score so that is some high, yeah. this, high this is praise. this is the film that kind of got me into films that discuss social issues like this i've always wanted to see kid kids and i want and i do like dallas buyers club as well and if you ever get a chance watch the series it's a sin because that's amazing it's called it's a sin yeah, it's about the AIDS pandemic in, in Britain in the 80s. Uh, Jonathan Demme is a pretty darn good director. Just in his top four is 
Philadelphia. The Manchurian Candidate, 2004 version. Rachel getting married, uh, that's interesting, uh, with uh, Anne Hathaway. And then, of course, his number one is The Silence of the Lambs. Which is his most famous movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I say, I think this is back-to-back -back for him. Yes, the Philadelphia was. So in two years in a row, he got a, he got a best actor wing in movie. That's crazy. Well, it shows how good of a director he was. Yeah, you got to get the best performance out of your actors, for sure. Exactly. Cool. Good pick. Thank you, thank you. I hope you check this out one day. Yeah, I definitely should. Uh, two great, uh, all awesome great actors, right? I mean, both of them are still working today and still getting nominated. So that's that'll, yes. that'll tell you something. Uh, all right. Well, in this movie, uh, my number five, uh, the lead also won for, I won an Academy Award for their performance. Uh, this is. Um, uh, it doesn't have the same sort of social issues that your movie did, but it definitely has some issues that uh, a whole uh, sort of uh, county and community is dealing with. I've talked about it before on other shows, other episodes that we've done, uh, at least one other time, maybe the one that's based off of biopics. And it's starring Julia Roberts and it's Aaron Brockovich. 2000, okay. Aaron Brockovich. Yeah, Steven Soderbergh uh, directed movie starring Julia Roberts, Albert Finney, and uh, uh, Aaron Eckhart's also in this as one of the leads. Yeah, she's playing Aaron Brockovich. Julia's playing Aaron Brockovich, who's a real uh, lawyer. Uh, she, you know, has kids, and she's there's this sort of um, uh, water issue that's going on in this county near her. So she goes over there to talk to the. <laughs> the friends and family of the community and uh, sees how much it's affecting their lives. So she really wants to change it. And of course, she's a, a sort of a sexier lawyer looking. So she gets a lot of um, gruff for that. And then a, another fact is that she's a woman. So that is also an issue. Uh, but this movie is freaking awesome. Julia won her uh, Academy Award for this Best Actress performance, and she totally deserves it. And she's as beautiful as ever. My second favorite Julia Roberts performance. 7.4 on uh, IMDb. What's your first? Pretty Woman. Yeah. Uh, $52 million was the budget, but it grossed $256.2 million. That is similar to Philadelphia. And I believe that one was after the awards. It really, or when it got nominated, it really sort of broke open uh, as uh, a, a higher budgeted. Uh, raking in that money <laughs> excuse me 85 percent of rotten tomatoes 81 percent audience score so uh pretty good overall and yeah i would say pretty woman's by my favorite performance by her oh it's, I would oh, it's oh she's amazing in that movie yeah yeah her her other her top four is pretty woman notting hill my best friend's wedding and stepmom I've only seen Pretty Woman all the way through. I did start Notting Hill, but I never finished it. Maybe I should give it a second chance one day. Yeah, it's a very sweet movie, and plus it's the classic line, I'm just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. Uh, my best friend's wedding is great. Uh, Cameron Diaz I, is a yeah, whack that's, job. Yeah, that's, that's why I want to watch it, because Cameron Diaz is in it. She's a whack job, so fun. And then Stepmom is just so sweet. Uh, and, and Julia and Susan together are just so amazing. All right, I can talk about her all day. Let's move on. What's your number four? Yes, we'll do a Julia Roberts episode at, at, at another point because obviously oh, she's in the movie coming oh, out. That would, that would be amazing. Yes, we'll do a whole episode dedicated to Julia Roberts. I love it. All, All right. right. What's your number? Well, my number four is a uh, film that appeared on my top 10 list today because I've been talking about this man all month because he's recently turned 60 years old, Mr. Tom Damn. Cruise. And this is one written by Mr. Aaron Sorkin and directed by Mr. Rob Reiner. And it's a few good men. 
Yeah, it's crazy that Rob Reiner is the director of this movie. He's a he's very a, he's a very diverse director. He can make dramas and comedies. Yeah, absolutely. He reminds me of like Gary Marshall almost. Uh, but uh, tell me about this movie. So there's this uh, murder that's happened on a naval base. This is all set in the navy, and Tom Cruise is the lawyer. He's trying to represent the defendants. And there's this evil colonel played by Jack Nicholson. In the he's meddling with things in the background. He delivers his most iconic line in this movie. And then you have Demi Moore, who completely steals the show in this movie. Uh, besides Nicholson, she is like this badass, tough, tough lady character, and that's what I love about her. And you also have some really good actors from the nineties with Kiefer Sutherland and Kevin Bacon. So, yeah. It's just a really powerful courtroom film, and it's really well written. It's a movie I'd love to see again, so I only watched it a couple of years back. But yeah, I recommend this movie a lot if you like Aaron Sorkin's. Like, this was originally his play, but then he adapted it into this movie, and it's an amazing movie that I would recommend to just always get keeps you keeps you invested in what in this trial that's happening. And I think when anybody hears courtroom movie, they just immediately jump to this one. It is the most classic and iconic. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Um, also starring, yeah, Kevin Bacon, Kevin Pollack, Kiefer Sutherland, J.T. Walsh, Christopher Guest, uh, also uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. is in this movie, and yes. Noah Wiley. So this is a huge, huge cast. Yes. Um, fantastic. Yeah, this is, uh, this is definitely one that came to mind immediately, but, uh, it's just not one of my favorites. I'm, I am a less of a drama guy, um, uh, when it comes to just movies in, in general. And when it comes to courtroom too, it's a little tough because it's when you're, when you're kind of being stuffed into a, a courtroom and it's all stuffy in there anyway, like it, it can be a little off putting. But uh, great film. Uh, I would just put it in a top great films of all time. You just forget about courtroom. Box office. Uh, the budget was forty-one million dollars, and it grossed two hundred forty-three point two million dollars. That's insane. Great uh, uh, pick up there. Seven point seven IMDb, eighty-three percent on Rotten Tomatoes, eighty-nine audience score. Overall, a damn good pick. Yes. Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm look. I'm interesting here. See if your number four is uh, in this. What your number four is? I don't think it's on your list. This is a new one. This is a movie just came out a few years ago. Uh, but I do think that the acting in this movie is really what elevates this uh, a courtroom movie. Um, it is uh, based off of a true story. Uh, this is about um, the tagline here says world renowned civil rights defense attorney Brian Stevenson works to free a wrongly condemned death row prisoner. This movie came out in 2019 starring Michael B. Jordan and it's just mercy. Yeah, I wanted uh, to watch, I haven't seen this one. I wanted to watch it. Yeah. Also Brie Larson's in this movie, Jamie Foxx, but uh, the star here, the man of the hour is uh, Rob Morgan. And he just, he's such a fantastic actor. He's, you know, he's another inmate in, in this, in the prison that uh, um, uh, Jamie Foxx is in. But, uh, it, and it's not even Michael B. Jordan's like best performance, but what it's, it's, it's Jamie Foxx and it's Rob Morgan. They're the ones who steal the show. This movie is important, you know, because it's a, uh, it's during the civil rights um, time and he's trying to help these black men who are wrongly accused break out and uh, uh, Jamie Foxx and Rob Morgan are both uh, sort of in the same position. And um, it's just so sad and, but very heartfelt, uh, uh, you know, it, I hate looking back on what we did to people, you know, and how they were treated. And I, I know it's still happening and still going on, um, but at least there's some more equality going on. Uh, Brie Larson's great in this movie. And uh, also um, uh, Ice Cube's son is in this movie. Oh, Shea Jackson Jr. 
Yes, yes, yes. O'Shea Jackson Jr. This movie is directed by Destin Daniel Cretton. And I'm not really familiar with him. Oh, he was the director of Shang-Chi. And he's directing the new Avengers film that just got recently announced. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, he also directed Short Term 12, which was with Brie Larson, and uh, The Glass Castle, also with Brie Larson. I know he loves working Glass with Brie Larson a lot. That doesn't mean I'm not going to watch his filmography just because I don't like an actress. So I do want to see Short Term 12 because Rami Malik's in it. Have you seen... Uh, you have seen it or no? Short Term no, 12? No, that's on my list to watch. Yeah, that is a great, great movie. And we both really enjoyed Shang-Chi, so we uh, we know he's a great director. And uh, an Asian man directing a, a cast of uh, African-American men. That's uh, that's pretty solid, you know? That's that's good diversity going. Yeah, uh, I'm about to say Ang Lee's directed... Probably not a, a lot of people... Of a, Ang Lee's directed yeah. white people movies, and he's Asian. Well, but being that they're white is not diverse. You know, the, that's the whole point is uh, he, he's non-white. He with Will Smith on his last film, that's diverse. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. That's good. Um, that's what I'm saying is good. Uh, I wasn't trying to put any other Asian director down. So, uh, and, and, and look at Snowpiercer. So that was the most diverse cast you could have. Yeah, but the lead was a white male. That's that's my point. Is the lead in Just Mercy and Chang Chi are they're not white men. <laughs> that's the diverse part. Anyways, we'll move on from that. Uh, just Mercy is definitely not going to be on a lot of people's uh, top list, but it was just a fantastic performance-driven movie, and I really liked it. That's why it's my number four, seven point six uh, IMDb. Didn't do too well at the box office. Let's see what we got. Yeah, budget was a twenty-five million worldwide. Gross was only fifty point eight million, and um, let's see what we got for the score here. Eighty-five uh, percent to uh, Rotten Tomatoes, ninety-nine percent from the audience. So I think I'm in that boat there. Just Mercy, number four. Right, you ready for my number three? Because this is probably the most performance-driven movie on this list because it's a bunch of A-list actors who all are just putting their A-game into this into this movie. Go ahead. We already know. Do you want me to just reveal it? It's the trial of the Chicago 7. (laughs) Yeah. Of course this had to be on your list. And, uh, yeah, this looks like it's the most recent of the movies so far coming out in 2020. Tell me about the trial of the Chicago 7. So this was one of my favourite movies of 2020 because there wasn't many movies, but this was one. One of the ones I enjoyed liking most because of all these brilliant actors putting their air game. You had Sasha Baron Cohen, who gave more dramatic performance than normal and showed his dramatic range. I mean, Michael Keaton, Mark Rylance, John Carroll Lynch, the bloke from Greatest Showman and Aquaman and Ambulance. What's his name, Justin? He's a big celebrity at the moment. Uh, um, uh, Mbappe, thirteen the second, right? That guy. That's it. Yeah, yeah, him, him, that guy. And then you have Jeremy um, Strong and Alex Yaya Strong Abdul, well. the the second. That's him. That's his name. Yes. Mm-hmm. Frank Langella, yeah. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Mark Rylance. And the man that steals the show, Mr. Eddie Redmayne. Yeah, Michael Keaton. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, this uh, is based uh, on a true story where these uh, gang of protesters called the Chicago Seven are on trial because mm-hmm. they indicate the riot. Sorry about that. Yeah, uh, this, this I love true stories and also... This is kind of uh, similar to Just Mercy where, uh, you know, it's for a good cause. It's for um, something that that people should stand up for. Oh, that's cool. I was just talking about the movie while you were gone. Yeah, what what were you saying? Uh, Just that it's important, kind of like Just Mercy, where it's for a good cause and, like, people are standing up for something that they believe in. And uh, when they know people are not guilty to, you know, fight as hard as you can to prove it. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely. But but yeah, I just think Aaron Sorkin writes a good screenplay here. I know I nominated him for Best Director when I started the Fleming Award. I'm glad Christopher Nolan won in the end. But yeah, I don't think he's that good of a director as a writer. But I think this is the strongest I've seen him direct, getting all these good performances out this brilliant cast. Absolutely. Uh yeah, I mean it's it's a solid solid movie. Just like you said, the acting's incredible in it. The movie itself is okay. It's a little, you know, a little little long uh, being a little bit over than 2 hours, but um but it felt long in my opinion. But I I did like a lot of the stuff outside of the courtroom. I thought that was a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, this movie was a big Oscar contender. Did, it was did, did you get amazed when he's reading out the names at the end? Well, yeah, yeah, it is. It's insane. Um, again, it just makes me so sad to see what um, what we continue to still do. To uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, but uh, yeah, it was nominated for Best Picture that year. Obviously, in 2020, we were a pandemic uh, living, so it didn't have a, a, a lot of movies to choose from. But this is this was good. It was a solid film. Uh, 7.7 on IMDb. There is no uh, box office budget. It did have a budget of 35 million. Uh, 89% of Rotten Tomatoes, 90% audience score. And uh, pretty solid stuff. And it won two of my Fleming Awards Best Original Screenplay and Best Editing. Oh, okay. Nominated for a bunch, though, right? It had some supporting actors in there, director, maybe. Yeah, it was nominated for Best Director. Eddie Redmayne nominated for Best for Best Supporting Actor. It was nominated for Best Cinematography and Best Score as well. Yeah, for the oh, Oscars. Oh, oh, and later on, when I've had when I added more in, I gave uh, the song best original song. So I like that right. at the end. Uh, hear my voice yeah. by Celeste. Yes, hear my voice. Also nominated for best picture, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen got the supporting actor nomination. Uh, Aaron Sorkin for screenplay, achievement in film editing, cinematography, and song. Six awards. Didn't win any. Yeah, yeah, I think because they mashed in the other the early twenty twenty one releases, they didn't get chance. Mm, oh right, have, no. I and you know it, and you know it was up against Promising Young Woman, which was the better written screenplay, obviously, because Promising Young Woman didn't come out till last year for me. Obviously, that had no competition, and neither did the right. trial of the Chicago Seven. No, which. Would have had it not been for that one. Yes. Um, all right, great. I will go with my number three. Um, and I have a tie at my number three because I had a last minute addition. Now, the one I'm going to talk about first was already in this position. The one I'm going to talk about after could be my number one. But they both fall into the similar category of their comedies. And they're not all about courtroom, but there is courtroom scenes in them. Can I guess is and, one of them liar liar? Uh, no. And the uh, um, the outcome is very highly based on what happens in the courtroom scene. So my number three tie I'm going to first talk about. This movie came out in 1999. It's hilarious. Uh, it's at the peak of, of his uh, comedy. Uh, plus, you have one of the sweetest kids in this movie, uh, one of the Sprouse children, and this movie starring Adam Sandler is Big Daddy. Yes, and great the, movie, great movie. Yes. It's, what, it's what made Paul Thomas Anderson or the cast Adam Sandler in Punch Drunk Love. Yeah, he's uh, he's a he's a good actor in this one. You know, normally he has like a crowd of people helping him <coughs> out, but it's just him and this and this boy, and it's so freaking sweet. And Adam Sandler really shows a different side to him than than we see normally uh, because he's more of a, yeah a father figure, you know. And uh, even though he's nowhere near uh, a father figure type, uh, this movie is just hilarious. It's very sweet. I've seen it you know two dozen times. Uh, 
I just love the dynamic between him and, and it's, I guess it's Cole Sprouse. This is also starring uh, John Stewart, who is the, uh, who, well, um, they're all lawyers. Like they, they went to law, law school together. So that's, um, that's how they know each other. Uh, but uh, the, the courtroom part about this movie is that uh, Adam Sandler pretends to be the actual father, John Stewart, uh, who's the father and uh, uh tries to adopt a kid um and then he uh gets you know accusations against him because that's against the law obviously uh and uh yeah it, it's a sweet moment because uh adam sandler's dad comes and you know they've had issues before and it is about a father-son sort of bond and relationship uh so that's a really really sweet moment leslie mann's in this movie who's uh, you know huge man. of course now also joy lauren adams who was uh chasing amy is also yep. in this movie, but uh, it's a sweet, sweet film. Of course, you have all of his friends, uh, Jonathan Logren Le- uh, and Steve Buscemi's in it, of course. Rob Schneider, who's so funny. Uh, yeah. Directed by Dennis Duggan. This is a fantastic film. Now, moving on, i uh, do uh, 6.4 on IMDb for Big Daddy. Uh, this is huge. Uh, budget was 34 million. Worldwide gross was 234.4 million dollars. That is a big payday. That's that's Adam Sandler money right there. <laughs> Check this out. Rotten Tomato score is 39 <laughs> percent. Audience score is 74 percent. If, so if, we're, if we're doing if we're doing a Julia Roberts episode, do we do an Adam Sandler episode? Hell yeah! Hell that's yeah! Cool. That's what. That's what he says. The old man says uh, uh, for the goddamn Jets. All hmm. right. Now, this movie for sure could be my number one. But again, it does not have enough courtroom scenes. And it's not necessarily about the court. But um, it the, the, the reason for the court and what is going on is a throughout of the entire movie. Oh, I just love this movie so much. It's one of my all times. It's one of the best comedies because of who is the man behind the lady face. And it's Robin Williams in 1993 is Mrs. Doubtfire. I mean, this is one of the greatest all time comedies ever. And uh, what we have here. Here is Robin Williams is trying to get custody of his kids after the divorce with uh, him and um uh, Miss Sally Field, and uh, the, he doesn't get to be around his kids uh, only on the weekends uh, and, and less than that. So he decides that he's going to dress up as a nanny and take care of his kids, thus him becoming Euthanania Dot Fire Deer. And it's just um, amazing performance by Robin Williams. I mean, everyone knows this movie. I don't even need to talk about it. It was a run by Fruiting, uh, directed by Chris Columbus of. Um, uh, Home Alone fame, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, you've seen this movie, right? Yeah, I've seen it twice. I mean, I didn't watch it till I was an adult, but yeah, I've seen it twice. Yeah, um, I remember when I was a kid, my mom is like, you kids don't deserve to go to a movie, but I want to see this movie so bad. Don't embarrass me. And it was Mrs. Doubtfire. And we all sat there in silence with that. Well, of course, laughing because of how amazing it was. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, a great, um, Chris, great time. Chris Brosnan movie. is a bit different to his Bond role in this. He, he plays a bit of a jerk. Yeah. I'm, and actually, if you look back on it, he's not really playing a jerk. The only thing he does is he talks badly about Robin Williams once about being a bad dad, but he's not really a jerk. He's just kind of, I mean, it's like if you went after a lady who just was got off a relationship, you know, like you always seem like the bad guy right after the one who came, you know, before. So, I mean, trust me, when my parents split up, the lady who was with my dad uh, first, not a not a fan and still am not like it's it's just there's something about it you know uh but anyway it's a fantastic film uh, another big budget winner here uh 25 million dollar budget 441.2 million dollar gross it, it, it's hard to come back from that when your parents aren't divorced 
my parents are still together, so. Sure, yeah. Yeah, you uh, relate seven to point, it a lot more than I good. do. That's nice that they're still together. It's it's hard to come by these days. 7.1 on IMDb, 72% on Rotten Tomatoes, 77 audience. But the, Mrs. Doubtfire would definitely be my number one because it's the best movie of all the movies that I uh, am talking about, in my opinion. But it just didn't have enough courtroom scenes. But it does carry throughout because they do go to court to try to gain custody of the kids. And uh, it is it is a running through line. So that is my tie at number three. You ready for my number two? Because this is also Hit written it. by Mr. Aaron Sorkin, but it's directed by Mr. David Finch. This is a movie I've spoken about loads of times. And it's the social network. And the reason why I put it on this list was because the whole framing device is the court case. What is the movie? The social network. Oh, the social network. Okay. Yes. We've spoke, we, I spoke about this before in a biopic, and I'll probably end up talking about it even more when we rank David Fincher movies. But, yeah. This is a good movie because, like I said, uh, Andrew and Mark put in some phenomenal performances. And the screenplay is really well written because it uses the court case as a framing device and then has flashbacks of how they invented Facebook and explores it very well. And I just think this is a all, all well rounded that movie. Uh, yeah. And the um, score as well. The score for, that, for this movie is incredible. Yeah, this is a really good movie and a good choice. Um, with the allegations against uh, against um, what's his name, the one who plays the twins, the Visselvoss twins. You're muted, Rob. You're muted, Rob. You're muted. Headphones. Uh, there we go. I'm back now. Yes. What's his name? Army Army Hammer. Hammer. Apparently, he's selling condos in the Cayman Islands now. I know. So, uh, you know, are we supposed to cancel this movie because of that? No. Well, they still have Bugs Life on Disney Plus, and there's a man on trial. He's in that film. Who? Kevin Spacey. I thought he was in Ants. No, that's Woody Allen in Ants. Kevin Spacey's well, in a big life. So it looks like we need to cancel both of them. Yeah, for the sound of it, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's tough because it's we, we, we shouldn't be promoting movies with... Uh, I mean, we we can, but we, you know, as a society, we shouldn't be promoting uh, movies that have uh, sociopaths in them. But um, this is a great film. It, it broke a lot of barriers. Uh, it's smart. Uh, it gave us um, Jesse Eisenberg, but it gave me Andrew Garfield, who honestly may be one of the best actors that we have going today. Yes, my second he, favorite actor working today. He's so good. And I rewatched, uh, I know this isn't like the best performance or whatever, but I just rewatched No Way Home. Uh, the Spider-Man movie, and he's phenomenal in it. Like, yeah. every scene he's just, like, crying, and he's just the scene where the th three of them are talking about how they lost, you know, somebody in their family, it was like, uh, I was crying again. Uh, Andrew Garfield's such a solid actor. Uh, Rooney Mara's also in this, Justin Timberlake, um, and then Dakota Johnson as well. Uh, good choice. This is, this is a good movie. $40 million budget. Two hundred twenty-four point nine million. Uh, so, so our, our, right now, our highest IMDb score at seven point eight, ninety-six percent Rotten Tomato and eighty-seven percent audience. Wait, till you hear my number one? So it's in the top ten of IMDb. Whoop whoop! All right. My number two is a movie that I have mentioned once before. It doesn't get a lot of uh, talk or praise by anyone, really, which is fine. But um, as a kid, I got to see you know this movie or whatever I put on 
our, uh, my, my parents let us watch anything pretty much. And then especially if uh, they were uh, watching it, we can watch it with them. Uh, this movie has a great cast. It's just something that is just really tugs at my heartstrings because I just kind of feel for the the young boy in this movie who witnesses the suicide of a mafia lawyer uh, hires an attorney to protect him when the district attorney tries to use him to take down a, fa- a mob family. This movie came out in 1994. I did talk about it recently. Uh, it's starring Susan Strand and Tom Lee Jones, and it's called The Client. Uh, uh, Brad um, Renfro is in this movie. He plays the young boy who sees this murder. Uh, his brother also sees this murder, but it really it makes him... Uh, go dark like he, he doesn't speak anymore he doesn't uh he's you know hard he can't really eat he's like really became sick after seeing such a brutal murder uh and now um yeah he wants uh somebody to help him out pro bono he doesn't have any money so he goes to susan sarandon and uh her and uh tommy lee jones try to save the boy from this mom well i guess he's the district he's on the other side of tommy lee jones but uh yeah, I guess spoilers. Um, there's a turn of events there, but uh, yeah, pretty solid movie directed by Joel Schumacher, who we know. Um, have you seen this movie, Rob? No. <laughs> yeah, uh, and before I mention it, I'm sure you may had you heard of it. I think so. I'm not a big Susan Sarandon fan, but I will check it out. Uh-huh. What? She she she's in Stepmom. Uh, what's Salman in the Louise for Gina Davis and Brad Pitt? She's also in um, Bull Durham, which is one of my favorite baseball movies. Uh, box office budget was forty five million worldwide gross, one hundred seventeen point six, so pretty good. Six point seven on uh, IMDb, and looks like. Rotten Tomatoes gave it 80%, audience score 69%. 1994, The Client. Great, great movie. Yes, it's from my birth year, so I probably should watch it. Sure. That's great. Suspenseful. You feel for the kid? Uh, Based off a John Grisham novel. Yes. Yes. Ooh, nominated ready? for one Oscar. Hold on, let me see. Ooh, best actress. She lost, but nice. She won the BAFTA. <gasps> Excuse me. So All you right. ready for my number one? I'm ready. Right, so my number one is a film from the 1950s. It might sound dull to you, but it's one of the best films I've ever seen in my life. It's... Oh, yeah. It's all set in one room, and it all determined on whether this man is guilty or not. It's, it hasn't had the full court scene. It's just a scene with the jury for an hour and a half, and it's 12 Angry Men. From 1957. From 1957. Yep. Yeah, uh, this is one of the movies that is also like A Few Good Men, where as soon as uh, you hear... The name you're you immediately go to it. You hear courtroom, you immediately go to it. So, uh, yeah, tell me more about this movie. So before the tri- so this boy is on trial for murder, and and everybody but this one man played by Henry Fonda says he's guilty. But and his and Henry Fonda's goal is to change everybody's mind to prove why he's not guilty. Yeah. The whole movie is a simple concept that's dragged out into an hour and a half and makes for a good movie and an intense watch because you don't know the fate of this court case. The whole whole court case rests between this one man just trying to persuade the jury why this man is not guilty. Mm. And it's weird because when they're describing to you the evidence and everything about it and their lives and stuff, you can picture it in your head and in your head it becomes... The movie is becomes in your head with the information that you're hearing on screen. It's not a movie that needs any like clever effects, or it just needs a good script, some good uh, some good cast, and a good director. And this is what this movie has that makes mm-hmm. it shine. Yep, directed by Sidney Lumet. 
um, based uh, off of a, a, a play, um, yeah. which is great. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I completely agree. Yeah, this movie sings because it um, takes place in the one room and you all the acting in it is amazing. Everyone's doing their part. Everyone's participating in, in uh, you know, the whole Have you seen this one concept before? Of a, yeah, they they showed us this in 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 school. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, it is the it is the uh, number five top rated movie on IMDb, um, uh, coming in at nine point zero. Uh, box their budget was three hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is crazy. Worldwide gross nine hundred fifty five dollars. So. <laughs> Um, but a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes, ninety-seven percent audience score. So this is one of the uh, top movies for sure, and I'm sure it would be on a lot of other people's number one courtroom movie. All right, ready right, to move on? Your, let's hear your number one. Okay, my number one is definitely not going to be on IMDb's top anything. <laughs> But it is uh, a hilarious movie and a performance driven by the lead in this movie. Um, and I would say that a lot of people would think this is one of uh, their best uh, movies when it comes to this sort of era that uh, Jim Carrey was having because 1997 Liar Liar is my number one. I knew, I Lots knew, of core room in this list. movie. I knew this would be in your list. Lots of courtrooms in this movie. Lots of time spent in the courtroom. And every time it is, it's just so hilarious. All the way to, through the end to the outtakes. I mean, it's just so great. Uh, of course, Jim Carrey's in this movie. Maura Tierney, Jennifer Tilly, Carrie Elwes. Um, Susie Kurtz, who's a great. Sherry O'Terry is also in this. Directed by Tom Shadiak, who loves his Jim Carrey, as do I, is my all-time favorite actor. Um you know obviously i mean even still now like look at him in sonic and sonic 2 he's still are you gonna it. find a new one now he's retired what's that you're gonna find a new actor because he's retired now well he says that unless he has a script that he's really really happy about um he's uh he's not going to come back to acting well we just want to Co- just write a script for him and see if he wants to come back well, I would love uh, to close out the trilogy for A.S. Ventura. And he just you has want to a... see him do something experimental like Eternal Sunshine again? No. <laughs> uh, by the way, Cody's chiming in. Our buddy Cody's chiming in. He's tired of your Brie Larson slander, Rob. Which... I I hear you, Cody. <laughs> uh, liar, liar had a budget of forty five million dollars. Worldwide gross is three hundred two point seven million dollars. Uh, does not have a good audience or uh, IMDb. I think it's a uh, six point seven here. And then uh, Rotten Tomatoes, eighty three percent. Nice, seventy five percent run uh, for the uh, audience score. But yeah, this is uh, this is uh, about a lawyer who's just fast talking, uh, loves to lie, and he um, his kid makes a wish on his birthday because his dad didn't show up that he wished his dad couldn't lie for just one day, and and he gets his wish and he can't lie, and there's so many points in the movie where Jim Carrey tries to lie and he just can't do it. Lots of pratfalls, lots of uh, you know sticking your foot in your mouth. It's just hilarity that ensues throughout the entire movie. Even when he gets pulled over by the cop and he just, he goes, uh, you, do you know why I pulled you over? And he just goes on this huge rant of all the things that he uh, did that was illegal. And it's just so, so great. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so he's a lawyer trying to, the big case that he's trying to he do. He has is, the uh, best name out of all his characters, Fletcher Reed. Yeah, I like, I like, uh, I like um, Dumb and Dumber. Lloyd Christmas. Yeah, Lloyd. Come on. Who, what's better than Lloyd? Well, uh, 6.9 IMDb. 
Yeah, it's cool. Fletcher's cool. Uh, Carrie always is, you know, kind of annoying in this because he's the new the new step step guy coming around again after the divorce. It's always hard. Uh, but yeah, it's great. Lots of fun. Can't lie for 24 hours. It's hilarious. I would watch this movie right now. Liar Liar is my number one. I see so me and you went in more different direction to this one. You and I did? Yeah, because you went for more the comedy route where I went from ones that more focus on the case. Well, uh, out of my six movies, three of them are drama and three of them are comedy. So it looks like I'm 50 50. Um, but I just went with movies that I like. I think you went with courtroom drama and I just went with courtroom movies because that's that should it should be the topic is courtroom movies because there's more than just dramas out there that are courtroom. Um, do you have any also? Ra- oh, let's count them down real quick. Yeah, my number, number five number was five? Philadelphia. I have Aaron Brockovich, my number five. And my number four is A Few Good Men. Just Mercy came in at my number four. My number three is A Child of the Chicago Seven. I have a tie at my number three is Big Daddy and Mrs. Doubtfire. The Social Network is my number two. My number two is The Client. And 12 Angry Men is my favorite courtroom movie. And Liar Liar is my favorite courtroom movie. Right. Um, yeah, any also ends? Uh, yes, I was debate. Uh, Kramer versus Kramer was one that came to mind as well. Yep, yep. very good. There was a couple that came to mind as well. Marriage was, Story. Like, yes, Marriage Story was one. Um, Chicago, that's pretty solid. Um, uh, Intolerable Cruelty, that one's for Cody. Uh, jury Duty is insane, but, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, that's with, uh, what's his freaking name? Oh, God, I'm blanking. What's his name? Oh, Polly Shore. Yeah. I always wanted uh, to see, uh, what was that famous one called? A Killer Mockingbird. Oh, well, that's what I, th- when you started talking about an old movie, I thought that's what was coming was to kill a mockingbird. But then when you said it took place in, in one, one area, I was like, oh, well, yeah, 12 angry men. Uh, yeah, to kill a mockingbird, good will hunting. Uh, let's see. I Dark always Waters wanted to see really a time good. to kill as well. I heard that's really good. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Um, Miracle on 34th Street. My cousin Vinny. Big, that's a big one. Oh, I like He's my big one. Vinny. Yeah, I haven't seen it. That's why I didn't put it on my list. Marissa Tomei is really good in it. Yes, she won the award. She won the Oscar. Uh, Primal Fear. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Uh, the is Rainmaker. That, one Tom uh, that one's... Uh, Primal Fear is... Um, is Richard Gere and uh, oh, Edward know. Norton? Yes, I've heard of that one. Yeah, uh, the one with what is uh, what's the one with Tom Cruise? But yeah, The Rainmaker, uh, Runaway Jury, In the Name of the Father, The Lincoln Lawyer, Michael Clayton, The Judge, and the B Movie, and the B Movie, JFK. Yes, I love JFK. Oh, Roman J. Israel Esquire. That's a good one. I like Roman J. Israel Esquire. The Firm is the Tom Cruise movie. Nice. And The Juror and The Pelican Brief. All right. Uh, fantastic. Uh, do you have any recommendation for the for the week? Yes, I do. It's a film on what I watched for Cody's upcoming podcast. It's a Coen Brothers movie. It's from 2008, and it's called Burn After Reading. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to talk to Cody about this movie, because this movie is the silliest film the Coen Brothers have brought us, and it is very interesting watch. I've watched this film a fair few times in my life, and and every time I watch, I always think, 
Yeah, it's a funny movie. It's nothing special. It's just an entertaining movie, and I'll save I'll save it there. Uh, this movie has three of my favourite actors in: Tilda Swinton, Francis McDormand, and Brad Pitt. Yes. Yeah. Nailed it. Uh, yeah, I need to give that one a rewatch. I certainly do. And there's a lot you of should, you should, It's a movie that should be reevaluated as one of their best movies. Which one? Uh, Burn After <laughs> Reading. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> the movie I've been I was looking at the. I was looking at the courtroom movies again, and I was like, uh, what are we talking about? Burn after, uh, yeah. after reading is not a courtroom movie. No, I know, I know. Uh, yeah, good good pick. I mean, people, if you haven't seen that, I mean, you, if you're a movie lover, you should also be a, a Coen Brothers completionist and get on uh, watching that, Burn After Reading. Um, yeah, I don't know what I want to do this week. Because, you know, Nope came out, and I really, really, really enjoyed it, but people are seeing it, so I don't need to recommend it. Um, I'll, I'll recommend one. It's I don't think it's worth um, uh, paying money to rent it, but uh, if you can, you know, wait for it to be on a streaming service or whatever, which I'm sure any, you know, week now it will be, uh, it's starring Ray Fiennes and Jessica Chastain, and it's called The Forgiven. And they are a couple who go out to like the Sahara Desert for this sort of vacation rental home that their friends are having a party at for the weekend. And they hit a boy on the in the road on the way there. And the father comes to collect the boy's body and asks that Ray Fiennes goes to help bury the, the body because uh, that's just custom. Of course, they think that they might be a part of ISIS and stuff like that. So they're really sort of skeptical about it all. All the while, Jessica Justine is at the weekend rental, uh, partying up and forgetting about the entire thing. So uh, uh, somebody I know said it was boring. I disagree. I just think it was a really straightforward movie that is kind of thrilling and kind of keeps you on your, your toes. Uh, but um, I don't think it's worth the six ninety nine rental. But uh, if you can wait till you find it for streaming, it is definitely worth the view. Nice, nice one. And it's got the two great, great actors, Jessica Chastain and uh, and Ray Fiennes is like unbelievable. Plus, um, the there's a the guy f who's doing a lot lately, who was in it that I liked a lot. Matt Smith, he was in The Devil Knows You're Dead. Um, he was just in oh, uh, this is Last Night in Soho. You're saying Matt Smith, I've known who Matt Smith is for 12 years being on a sci-fi show. Well, then why didn't you say he, what movies he was in when I just said Matt Smith? You could have been like, oh, from this movie, from that movie. He's from a TV series in the UK called Doctor Who, and he's also in on the biggest series on Netflix, The Crown. No, nope, never seen it. Um... Uh, another what actor against TV shows. They're not movies. Yep, yeah, but the way how TV's expanded, each episode is like a mini movie now. The Stranger Things finale was on for two and a half hours. I know, and it shouldn't have been. It should have been forty-two minutes, like all the other seasons. Just give me the regular bull. Because uh, yeah, I fell asleep the first time. Because it's also not a good two and a half hours, you know, it's fine. Uh, I also like this kid in it, uh, Caleb Landry Jones, who was in Get Out um, as uh, the brother, who's such a dick. He's also in Three Billboards. And Three Billboards, yep. The Dead Don't Die. Finch. Yeah, he's, he's a good up-and-coming actor as well. So, uh, yeah, The Forgiven is my He'd be, he'd be good as the Joker one day. Or the Riddler. Or the Riddler, yeah. Um, all right. Sweet. Uh, you can find me at Worth of You Movies and all the things. Uh, yeah. Check over on TikTok. I did um, my uh, top five movies of the uh, the ones who we've lost recently. Uh, Ray Liotta, James Caan, and um, 
uh, Philip Baker Hall. So uh, those are over there on TikTok exclusive. And yeah, worth view movies and other things. What about you? You can find me on Robbie's Reviews. Uh, today we did Tom Cruise top 10 performances. Tomorrow I, I review Chopper after my first time watch. Uh, he, the director, Andrew Dominic, is bringing out Blonde this year. And hopefully we'll, we'll talk about it when it comes out in September. And I talk the Grey Man on your channel. That's right. Uh, and uh, what are we talking about next week? I gave you a whole list of things that we could talk about. And you go, yes. right, let's no. not do any of those. Let's do courtroom. And I'm like, okay. Yes, I'll be fair <laughs> this time. I'll have a look at the list you sent me now. And uh, we'll decide. We'll decide. Yeah. I think it should be, because uh, next week is August. Um, oh, Bullet Train comes out. But. I think um, I couldn't think of anything that it, it coincides with that release. Uh, so. Hello, movie set in Japan. No, that doesn't sound fun at all. Um, how about Japan? I've seen Japanese films and they're they're awesome. Okay, well then maybe you can do it one sided because I don't really have the 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 sort of a list in that I that you do so. Um, but you know uh, what, yeah, you no, know I thought of a good one. Top five remakes. Does everything mm. getting remade nowadays? I know, but they're never good. And your favorite movie from last year was a remake, wasn't it, Mr. Doyle? I don't think so. Nightmare Alley, yes, it is, because I've seen the original version from the Porters. Yeah, but it's uh, it's had its its own take on it. Still, technically, a remake. Yeah, I don't want to do that either because well, there's not there's not a good top five. Uh, I think it should be like the summer movies or the road trip movies or the buddy movies, like something that's more fun in we've summer. Done, we've done road trip movies before with Cody. So yeah, maybe summer movies might be fun. Summer movies. Yes, I'll have a really good dive into that one, so I want to get it right. You want to give it right yes let's see let's see let's see a list of remakes real quick to see if any of them are uh... and spielberg made a phenomenal remake last year as well what west side story oh yeah that was a good one um... code is a remake the departed's a remake two best well, pictures I... are remakes I have to see, have seen the first, and I haven't. I've not seen the first. Uh, I haven't seen first rally. I haven't seen. I haven't seen. Um, oh, Dune. That's a that's a good remake. Well, there you go. Yeah, I guess I guess we can do remakes. We'll do summer that's movies good. next week, and we'll do more. It's research. way better than the movies set in Japan. Blah. Uh, yeah, summer movies and then remakes sound good. Sorry, just made me think of, of Lost in Translation, which is another good film set in Japan. Mm. Mm, it's an okay film. Uh, awesome. Well, that'll be that then. Yes. Yes, good to hear. Good to see you, buddy. And we'll see each other next week. Yes, thank you. And if you guys have any uh, any of your favorite courtroom movies, put it down in the uh, comments below. If you have any like, suggestions for us to, to my talk channel. about, like More and subscribe, subscribe to, to get them all we'll reveal the winner of my new TV awards. Boom, boom, and uh, yeah, subscribe to mine at Worth of You Movies. And until next time, until next time, bye, Justin. Later, Rob. Bye, guys.